All right, so we got our bare cylinder head here. And the first thing that I'm gonna do is verify that everything is clean. There's no really foreign debris or nothing around the cylinder head. I've done that already, we're good to go. Um, next is if it, the head is completely bare, um, you're gonna have to install your valve seals. Now, these seals are extremely easy to install. You don't need no tools, you can do them right by hand. You just apply a little bit of engine oil in the middle of the seal. And then I'll bring the camera over so you guys can see. And then we'll do this one right here. So you literally take your hand and you just press down on them and they'll, they'll seat on the, on, the, on the bottom just like that. That's all there is to it for the seals. So we'll do the rest of them and then we'll get ready to install some valves. All right, so now we have all the valve seals in and the cylinder heads. Next is to install the actual valves themselves. The seals will help keep the valve from falling back out, but it's not gonna prevent it from sliding down completely. It will still slide down, but only a little bit. If you removed your valves, you should have numbered them and it's very important that they go back in their original orientation. Um, you know, lapping these, these valves in will also help keep a good seal as well. So we have all these, these numbered right here, and I'm going to verify this says it's supposed to be the number one intake valve for the right cylinder head. You come back and you make sure that your cylinder head is the right cylinder head. And I've already took a picture and verified that I went in numerical order, started from one and then making my way all the way around. So just a couple of pieces right here to give you a little bit of terminology. This is your valve spring, obviously, but this is your retainer. Your retainer hat does not always come off really easy, especially if they're dirty and used and old. So you will have to put something through the spring and actually separate the two and clean them individually. You have valve keepers, which are these little guys right here that wrap around the three grooves and it's what keeps the valve attached to the valve spring once it's inside the retainer hat. We're going to clean all these up and get ready to install them. You want to make sure you're taking some engine oil, some break-in engine oil. Put it all around the valve stem. And then go ahead and insert these into the valve guide. You're going to have to twist a little bit. Don't push too hard. We'll do the same thing for the exhaust valve. Those in, twist it a little bit. There's a little bit of pressure, and I'll go right in. All right, 
So you can have some residual oil. It's always good to kind of have an OCD approach where you're constantly cleaning up after yourselves instead of waiting to the end to clean. So we clean the excess oil off of there. And we have the oil and the valve seals that's gonna help keep this head and those valves in place as you flip the head over. So now we have the cylinder head over. Let me make sure you guys have a good angle on this. So you guys do a little bit over this way. All right, so now it's time to install this guy. So this does not need to be down tight at all. I just go to where there's no more play in the bolt and that's it. I don't even add any torque or nothing. There's this little attachment tool right here that you guys can see that this bolt goes in on top. So this guy is gonna thread through the top here like so. Let me get it started. And then what we're gonna do is, is this is the intake side, so I'm gonna go ahead. Now that we have these two apart, we're gonna go ahead and snap them back together. You'll hear a click. I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but it clicked in and now the retainer won't leave the spring. So it doesn't matter what orientation it goes in. Next, we're gonna put this little piece in. This sits right on top of the retainer hat. You will also hear this click in on the intake side, but not on the exhaust side because there's so much more clearance. All right, I don't know if you guys heard that. It was a little bit of a click. All right. And then we'll run this down. Now this is where I told you guys the valves don't always line up perfectly, so you might have to reach underneath the bottom. And you want the retainer hat to go right below the last groove in the valve. Next we're going to use some engine assembly grease from Driven. It looks like this. We're going to get two valve keepers here. All right, the easiest way I found to do this was just to set them in your hand, take a little bit of grease here, apply a little bit to each one. All right, wipe your finger off, and then take a flathead screwdriver, get some grease on, on the end of that, take your keeper, now the small side of the keeper, because there's a little bit of a taper on it, is gonna face down and the large side is gonna face up. Now that you have this grease, this isn't going anywhere and it's gonna be super easy to slide these in here. Yep, and they go right in. And then once you get the first one in, you wanna orientate it around the valve so that way you can slide the next one in. Both keepers are in, just like that. Again, we'll wipe our hands. And then all we do is we release tension. Remove our piece. And now we have a completely installed valve, guys. The spring, the retainer, the keeper, and the valve all in you're going to do that for the rest of them for the rest of the 15 valves that you have inside the cylinder head 
and you will do the same to the other side as well. So 32 total. 32 of each. That's all there is to it, guys. If you have any questions on this particular portion, I'm not really going to spend too much more time on this. Um, go ahead and drop a comment, and I'll answer it. Um, but there's really nothing more to this. I can't really see anybody else having a different type of scenario that would include something further other than maybe an explanation. But once you guys knock that out, then we'll be ready to actually start assembling the long block. All right, so I just got the cylinder heads on and I'm gonna show you guys a couple areas where you're gonna install these plugs and I'm gonna show you guys the torque sequence of, of how to get these heads secured to the block. So first thing I wanna address is these, is these engine plugs real quick. So there's a couple different locations before you guys put the timing components on. If you guys clean these cylinder heads, um, you should have removed these plugs and these are the locations that, that these plugs need to go back and I'll show you guys part numbers as well. So the first one I believe I showed you in a different video was the front one that actually connects to the short block near the water pump housing. Um, this part number is going to be, see if I can find it here for you guys. Yeah, this one, this guy right here. Let me make sure, yeah. Yep, all right, so this one. So this is gonna be your part number for that front um, that front engine plug. Be careful because when you guys go on forward, it will give you an option between this one and that one. And if you're choosing this one and you have a 2013 um, to 2014 block, it's not going to fit properly. So you guys need this one for 2013 to 14 and then this one for 11 to 12. They're just slightly different in the engine plug. Next, we're gonna address the plugs in the cylinder heads. So you will have one large one and then two small plugs that will need to be inserted on each cylinder head. For the large um, cylinder head plugs, that is going to be this bag right here. And let's see if there's a part number on it. It is, it's just bunched up, sorry about that. I'll read it out to you guys though. It's gonna be Foxtrot 6AZ6026. And then the last digit is going to be BA. So those are going to be your front two large plugs. Now for the small ones. That's going to be this part number, this engine plug, the Whiskey 716 number. That's going to be the two small cylinder plugs that go into here as well. And then, like I showed you guys on the first time, you'll need to purchase some Threadlocker 262 from Ford Motorcraft. It's the sealant that they recommend that goes around the engine plug when you insert these in. And then just a little tip when you're inserting plugs, they just need to be seated below the lip, not set all the way back, especially these first two plugs. There's an oil passage that goes to your cam journals right here and here, that if this plug is seat too far back, it'll interfere with that. So they need to go just right below the lip for all of them. Now on the back of the cylinder heads, I haven't installed these yet. Um, you'll have two little tap plugs. These are not an engine core plug that requires um, sealant that looks like a freeze plug. They're an, it's an actual pipe, um, like tap or whatever. It's a little plug that has a little hex head on it that goes in here. You'll apply the thread sealant to those, but one goes here and then one goes here. And then if you're not running the head cooling mod from MMR, you guys will insert two additional plugs that are the same exact ones as the ones up here. If you guys do purchase the head cooling mod, um, those are some of the fittings. This is it right here. So it has a rubber O-ring, this, and then the tube attaches to each side, allowing coolant to come out the back of the cylinder head, transfer over to the other side, and continue this cycle of coolant. So a plug will go here if you guys don't have that modification. And then the two tap plugs here, the two tap plugs here. And then last but not least, 
is this rear engine plug that I also showed you guys prior. And that is this part number right here. Let's see, it is the F5LY6026A. That's that wide plug right there. That once again goes right there. And then there is this one additional plug that we have to address that I don't have installed yet. This is also a tap style plug um, that just threads right in here with some with some with the same exact sealant you use for all the other ones. So just make sure you don't forget that. But if you bought the block new or you've already had this block nine times out of ten, you're gonna have this plug here and not have to really worry about it. But that those are the only plugs that are on this block. Now there are these ones three per cylinder head, but I didn't remove those because it's not dire to remove those when you're cleaning the cylinder head because you have a clear passage all the way through the block um, between the two openings of the front large plugs. You can remove those, and I'm assuming, don't quote me though guys, it, it looks like a similar plug that would fit back here, so you might just have to buy a couple more of these but because I didn't replace them, I don't have that part number for you guys. So let's address the actual torque sequence um, of the cylinder heads. Now, I didn't get footage because it's just a one man show right now and it's kind of hard to get the camera and do this at the same exact time. But when you place these cylinder heads on, I told you guys, make sure your head studs are out and only the actual um, little dowel pins are installed. I have little billet ones, but they didn't fit my block properly, but you'll just need these two um, dowel pins on each side to put the head on, and then you'll come from the top and insert the studs. So if you guys bought an ARP stud kit, it should have came with something like this. That tells you everything you need to do step by step to install the hardware, which is why I'm not going too crazy into this because there's a hundred videos and all of them cover fucking head stud bolts. So um, I'll just show you guys real quick the three stages that ARP wants. So we want 41 Newton meters on your first stage, then 95, then 136. If you guys are looking for foot pounds, it is anywhere between 10 to 35 foot pounds in stage one um, to 70 foot pounds to 100 foot pounds on stages two and three. You'll just need to make sure that the actual ragged side of the washer faces down and not up and that there is no ARP lube on the bottom of that washer that is completely dry. You apply the ARP lube to the top of the washer and to the threads and to the bottom of the nut head and then you insert it in and then just torque it down. The sequence you guys are going to go is from the middle outward when you're torquing. So just to show you guys here, it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, and so forth, just like the picture. And I'll get a close up on this. And that's all there is to it, to actually getting these head studs torqued down properly and getting the actual heads on the block. Then when you're done with that, make sure your plugs are in. When you're done with that, then it's time to actually start dressing the timing components of this block, which I'm about to do next. So I'll get some of the timing components on here, and if any of this is not straightforward, I'll definitely get a video and address it. But like I said, there's plenty of videos of this type of stuff, and I'm really only trying to address the things that um, videos have not covered in the past while giving you a complete picture of how one of these things get assembled from start to beginning, I'm sorry, from start to end. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the next step going and then we'll be back with another video.